Okay, so uh, we continue with the proof of the monotromy theorem. So we have this uh, we have this rectangle which is product of the uh, closed interval A B on the real line with the closed interval C D on the real line, and we have a homotopy capital F, uh, which is a continuous function on this uh, rectangle, and it gives a homotopy between the path uh, gamma. Uh, which is the beginning path in the homotopy and the path neta which is the uh, terminal path in the homotopy and of course uh, any intermediate path in the homotopy is, give, is given by gamma s okay gamma s is just uh, f of s comma t with s fixed and t varying all right and what we need to show is that uh, uh, if we know that uh, uh, there is an analytic function even at the point z0 which can be analytically continued along each of these paths then analytic continuation along any path will again lead to the same function at the terminal point z1 that is what we have to prove okay that is the monotomy theorem. So uh, how do we prove this proof is uh, proof is as follows so uh, so what we will do is we will do the following thing uh, you know uh, so what is given to me is that there is an analytic continuation of f along each of these paths okay so let me write down some analytic continuation all right so uh, uh, it is so for every s in cd uh, there exists an analytic continuation along the path gamma s which is given by uh, f of s comma t of z sigma n equal to 0 to infinity a n of s comma t into z minus gamma s of t to the power of n uh, with uh, radius of convergence with, with disk of convergence mod z minus gamma s of t is less than r sub s of t okay which is of course positive uh, with uh, with of course uh, and with f of s comma 0 is equal to f. So for so what I have done is uh, for each uh, gamma s I have written this f of s comma t which is which is an analytic continuation along the path gamma s starting with f okay and it has a certain uh, disk of convergence right. So uh, so you know so on this on this picture uh, gamma s is this path which is the image under capital F of this line of this line segment okay where s is fixed and c uh, i mean t varies from c to d t varies from a to b s is a fixed value between small c and small d and t varies from a to b and the image of this line segment under this continuous function f is this path gamma s and if you give me a point <coughs> if you give me a point uh, uh, t here uh, <coughs> a point corresponding to a certain value of t between a and b then the corresponding point here in this rectangle will have coordinates s comma t and the corresponding point and the, and the image of this point under f will be f of s comma t which is just gamma s of t so it is going to be this point gamma s of t 
I'm going to get a point here, and I have an analytic continuation along this gamma s as t varies, and uh, that is this uh, analytic continuation f s t, okay, and at the point gamma s of t, I'm going to get a power series centered at gamma s of t, okay, and the only thing that you have to remember is since there are two real variables or everything uh, I mean f a a n and gamma and also r they will all depend on two real variables s and t okay. So far they were depending only on one variable if you are if you are writing an analytic continuation along a single path then you get only one variable which is the path variable but now you are writing an analytic continuation on a family of paths okay which means that you have also uh, a variable for uh, different paths which is the variable s. So, there are two variables involved s and t. So, everything uh, is a function of uh, the, the, uh, the power series in the analytic continuation, the coefficients of the power series, the centers of the power series, the radii of convergence of the power series they are all depending on these two variables okay. So, s and t will appear in all of them that is how we write it okay. And so, this is given to me there is an analytic continuation like this okay. I do not care what this analytic continuation is for the moment all right, but it is given that there is an analytic continuation. Now, what I am going to do okay. So, the fact I am going to use is that this function r s of t if you think of it as a function from this rectangle with s t as a variable point in the rectangle then the claim is this r is a continuous function of that on that rectangle okay. In fact, uh, a n will also be a continuous function on that rectangle. Okay, so, uh, so here, so here is a, so here is a claim. Uh, 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 R s of t is a continuous function function of the point s comma t uh, in uh, the rectangle A V cross C D. continuous function. So, this is the this is a claim uh, we use the uh, we use the lemma that uh, if f is uh, so if g is analytic in the domain d u and uh, uh, for z in u uh, p g z uh, so let me put z prime uh, for z prime in u p g z prime is the uh, power series expansion of g around z prime with uh, disk of convergence mod z minus z prime uh, lesser than r of z prime then r is uh, continuous uh, as a function of z prime in uh, u. So, I am I am just using the fact that you know if you have an analytic function on a on a domain and at various points you start writing it is power series expansion okay. So, at various points I will get various power series expansions and at corresponding to each of these power series ex, uh, expansions I am going to get radii of convergence. So, as I change the point I am going to get different radii of convergence okay depending on which point I am taking expanding uh, the function of uh, power series about. Then the fact is that this radii as you change the point the radii of convergence will change continuously okay. So, we proved this. So, in fact what we proved is in fact we prove we prove if you remember we prove r of 
z1 minus r of z2 mod is strictly less than mod of z1 minus z2. We proved this. The difference in the radii of convergence of the power series expansion at z1 and z2 cannot exceed is, is, is smaller than the distance between the two points okay. So, uh, so, so this is a fact we need to use. So, let me draw another diagram. So, you know the situation is like this. So, here is my rectangle. Uh, so, this is uh, well this is A, this is B, uh, this is C, this is D and uh, this is the variable T, this is the variable S okay and here is my uh, particular value S. Uh, well if you want you know I can take a S naught and then I can take a certain T naught so I will get this point uh, which corresponds to S naught comma T naught and I have this F and what this F is going to give me is well it is going to map this uh, segment onto of course uh, comma which is uh, gamma A uh, rather gamma C uh, this is the path from Z0 to Z1 and then I have this other path below which is uh, which is neta and neta is uh, gamma D okay and corresponding to this line segment uh, with uh, uh, Y coordinate S0 I am going to get the, the intermediate path gamma S0 this is gamma sub S0 okay and uh, this is the point that corresponds to gamma sub S0 of T0 okay this is what I am going to get. Uh, now see I have to show that I am trying to show that R S R S of T is a continuous function of ST okay to show that a function is continuous it is enough to show it is locally continuous okay. So, it is enough to show that uh, R S of T is continuous in S and T in a neighborhood of each point S naught comma T naught in the rectangle alright. So, you know uh, uh, so you know fix so let me write that down it is enough to show R S T is continuous in uh, a neighborhood of S naught comma T naught for every point S naught comma T naught in that rectangle. It is enough to show this all right because to continuity is a local property to show that a function is continuous it is enough to show that on an open cover so uh, so you know I have though so I have frozen this S0 and T0 okay. Now for the moment what you do is you see you just look at this path gamma S0 okay All, along this path gamma S0 there is this analytic continuation which is given by F S0 comma T there is a there is this analytic continuation F S0 comma T and uh, it starts with F S0 comma 0 which is F it is an analytic continuation of F along this gamma S0 alright. Now you see by the previous lemma okay for all T uh, for all paths close enough to this path the analytic continuations are the same okay. We have uh, see the previous lemma that we proved in the in the uh, in the in the preceding lecture was that if you have analytic continuation along a path then along sufficiently close paths the analytic continuation is going to exist and is going to be and is going to lead to the same uh, function at the end okay. So, what you must understand is on nearby paths okay sufficient nearby means uh, uh, for S close to S0 okay if you take nearby paths then the uh, 
the analytic continuations are going to be the same as the analytic continuation along the path gamma is not okay. So, uh, by the pre by the previous by the lemma of the previous lecture previous lecture namely the lemma that I proved at the end of the previous lecture uh, uh, there exists delta of S naught uh, uh, such that for every S with mod gamma S of T minus gamma S naught of T is less than delta of S naught uh, the analytic continuation continuation uh, f s comma t is uh, uh, is going to be the same as analytic continuation along f s comma t is going to be the same as along f s naught comma t this is what we so you know I am saying that you know if you choose uh, any s which is very close to s naught okay. So if you choose s close to s naught alright then of course the uh, uh, the gamma s will become very it will come very close to gamma s naught. So, this is gamma s this is gamma s and this is gamma s naught if s is close to s naught then gamma s is close to gamma s naught that is simply because f is continuous and gamma s is the image of this line segment that corresponds to s uh, and uh, gamma s naught is the image of this line segment that corresponds to s naught okay and nearby uh, a continuous function maps nearby objects to nearby objects it is just continuity. So, as you make s close to s naught the gamma s comes closer to gamma s naught, but then if you had chosen s so that the distance between the point gamma s t and gamma s naught of t for each t is always less than this delta s naught okay. Then the analytic continuation along gamma s is the same as the analytic continuation along gamma s naught this is what we prove in the in a lemma in the previous lecture uh, in words to state that we proved to state what we proved was is that if analytic continuation exists along a path then analytic continuation will also exist along sufficiently close paths and all these analytic continuations will really lead to the same function at the ending point I am just using that lemma okay. The only thing is that this delta will now dip, it, this depends on that path yes not gamma s not okay. So, I, if I use that so what I get from this if I use that lemma is that uh, 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 so in fact you know uh, in fact what we if you go back to the uh, if you go back to the proof of that lemma what we proved was that the the analytic continuation at gamma s of t the analytic function you get at gamma s of t is the same as the analytic function you get at gamma s at a gamma s not of t okay. Because what we did was we actually defined on a close sufficiently close path we defined an analytic continuation by simply writing out the power series expansion at that point okay. So, in fact the analytic continuation uh, the function you get at s t is literally the same function that you get at s s not t for uh, s sufficiently close to s not. So, let me write this in fact going back to the proof of that lemma of that lemma uh, uh, the 
the function uh, f s t is the same as the function f s not t. as functions for S yes, such that mod gamma S of T minus gamma S naught of T is less than delta S naught for all T. Okay. So, this is again uh, going back to the proof of that lemma right and so you know what so what this tells you is that you know if you if you take uh, uh, if you take s sufficiently close to s naught all right then you are getting your all uh, for, for any value of t the analytic function you are going to get is the same for a fixed value of t okay all uh, for all these s which is close enough to s naught and for any fixed t the analytic function f s t is the same as f s naught t all right. Now what I want you to understand is that uh, but you see if t prime is close to t of course f s uh, t prime is uh, the same as f s t and f s not t prime is the same as f s not t that is also true that is because these are analytic continuations. Analytic continuations require that as the t variable uh, comes close to a particular value then the analytic functions given by the power series also coincide okay. So, what all this tells you is it tells you that you know it tells you that there is a neighborhood around s not t not where uh, all the functions f s t are a single analytic function okay so in other words there exists a neighborhood along around uh, around s not comma t not where all f s t uh, represent the same analytic function okay and call that function as g call that function as g uh, s not comma t not okay then r of uh, r g s not comma t not uh, of that is the radius of convergence of the power series of g s not comma t not at the point s comma t is just r s t r s of t in our notation is a continuous function of s comma t in that neighborhood by the lemma by the lemma uh, uh, so you know I will I will call this is I will I will say I will say lemma star uh, so I will I will I will label, label this lemma star this is this lemma star okay not to be confused with the lemma of the previous lecture this lemma star is the lemma that if you take an analytic function in a domain then if you expand the analytic function as a power series at each point then the corresponding radii of convergence will be continuous will be a continuous function of the point. So, you know there is a small neighborhood here where all the FSTs here all the FSTs represent the same function g s not comma t naught what it means is if you take the image of this neighborhood here okay you will because of the continuity of f I can find a small enough neighborhood here 
into which the image of this neighborhood goes okay and for all points in that neighborhood you are uh, 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 you are actually expanding the same function uh, g s not comma t not in this neighborhood which contains that neighborhood okay see you take this you take this point gamma s not of t not which is the image of the point s not comma t not under f okay then you take a sufficiently small uh, neighborhood of gamma s not of t not where this g s not comma t not lie lives see after all g s not comma t not is an analytic function which is it is not defined here g s not comma t not lives here. So, it is this so this is the point at which g s not comma t not is analytic okay g s not comma t not is analytic at this point which is the point gamma s not of t not okay it is analytic there and there g s if you in that neighborhood if you take any point and if you write the power series expansion of this g s not comma t not at, at that point and look at its radius of convergence then the radius of convergence is a continuous function of the point okay. So, the radius of convergence of g s not comma t not at each point in this neighborhood surrounding gamma s not t not is a continuous function of the point gamma s of t but gamma s of t is a continuous function of s of t because it is actually f. So, uh, r of uh, r s of t becomes a continuous function of s and t okay. So, in fact so, uh, so let me write that properly. So, so to uh, in fact there exists uh, a neighborhood of gamma s not of t not where g s not comma t not is analytic and uh, the radius of convergence of the power series expansion expansion T g s not comma t not at gamma s of t is a continuous function of gamma s of t in the uh, in, in that neighborhood of gamma s of t not. this is what I am saying right and R S T is actually uh, and R S of T is actually the radius of convergence of uh, the power series expansion of G S naught comma T naught at the point gamma s of t which is continuous function. So uh, and mind you this is just r composed with I am here now I am thinking of r as uh, composed with f of s comma t because f of s comma t is gamma s of t okay. So it is a composition of f, f is continuous and r is continuous therefore composition of continuous function so it is continuous. So, you know r is indirectly a function of s comma t so I wrote it directly there but if you want it more explicitly I have written it here okay. This is the reason why r is a continuous function of s and t okay. So, I what I have proved is r is a continuous function of s and t locally okay but that is enough to say that it is continuous globally because continuity is a local property right. It is a property that can be uh, verified at each point in a neighborhood of each point. So, so, uh, so I have proved this claim okay. So, I have this claim that R s t is a continuous function of s comma t in this rectangle okay. Now how do I proceed? Uh, 
I proceed in the same way I simply take the image of that rectangle and under R and I notice that the image will again be a compact interval and it will have uh, a minimum and I am going to call that minimum as delta okay. So you know uh, so R R S of T uh, is uh, so th so this settles the claim the claim that R S T is continuous in S T varying in this rectangle. and uh, uh, take the image under R of this rectangle ok. See this rectangle uh, this rectangle is anyway compact and connected the rectangle on the plane is a compact and connected set of course it is a connected set because it is actually path connected any two points can be joined by a path in fact uh, even by a straight line if you want ok and so it is <coughs> uh, so it is connected certainly and it is compact because it is closed and bounded because I have taken the closed rectangle so it is so it is compact and I have a continuous function uh, r defined on this compact set ok. So the result will be uh, 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 the, the image under R of this compact set will again be a compact subset compact connected subset of the real line so it will again be a closed interval in the real line ok and of course R is always positive so I am going to get a closed interval with minimum with left end point greater than 0 ok. So uh, which will be delta comma delta with delta positive ok. So this is where I use the continuity of R I need the continuity of R uh, to say that the image under R of this rectangle is uh, uh, you know compact and connected and a compact connected subset of R is just a closed interval and of course these R, R refers to various radii of convergence they are all positive radii of convergence. So uh, the so R values are always positive never 0 therefore uh, there is going to be a minimum value of R that is going to be del small delta and there is also going to be a maximum value of R that is capital delta ok. Uh, of course you know in all these situations uh, uh, I am really not uh, worried about the case when uh, at some point you know you get a power series whose radius of convergence is infinite ok. So you must always remember that see you always see me writing this small delta capital delta this capital delta tells you that you know the R is finite the radius of convergence of finite and you know radius of convergence of fi is fine the radius of convergence is finite means that at the circle of convergence there is a singularity for that analytic function because if there were no singularities the radius of convergence would have would become infinite ok. So always when the radius of convergence is finite on the circle of convergence there is a singular point for that function there is a point beyond which you cannot extend that function ok. So uh, there is a point at which you cannot extend that function so there is a singularity so uh, you always see me writing this delta here capital delta and uh, I just uh, wanted to make this remark that you know I am never looking at the case when radius of convergence is infinite because if the radius of convergence is infinite it means that one of the functions your uh, that occur in the analytic uh, continuation is entire if one of the functions is entire then there is nothing to continue because uh, an entire function can be continued everywhere. So you know you are not going to you are not going to get you are going to not going to get anything you are only going to get that function no matter how you analytically continue it ok it is going to be just direct analytic continuation just extension of that entire function to the whole complex plane. So there is nothing to prove ok so all these things become interesting only when uh, the radii of convergence are all finite ok the radii of convergence become infinite even for one point all these results they become trivial there, there is nothing there, there is really no real question there to answer ok. So that is the reason I am always thinking of 
are positive and finite okay fine so uh, so now now comes the uh, now that i have that i have this delta see now i am in uh, i am in very good shape so you see how i uh, uh, use this delta is as follows what i do is i have this you see this this rectangle that i have ab cross cd you see i can actually divide this rectangle into by by a series of lines parallel lines uh, you know s0 s1 s2 and so on some s uh, k and so on so that you know well maybe i i i'd rather call uh, this line as s0 that corresponds to c then i have s1 i call this as s2 i call this as s3 so maybe instead of writing it here i'll write it here this is s1 this is s2 uh, well and this is s3 and so on then i end up with sk and finally i end up with uh yes uh well some n capital n which is d all right and of course this this value will correspond to s n minus 1 so i can find these s's in such a way that you know if you take the image of each of these rectangular strips okay you will get uh, a piece of this this homotopy leaf there is a piece of this leaf like this like this region in between these two paths such that you know the distance uh, of the uh, uh, points corresponding to a given t is less than delta okay so uh, so 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 let me write this uh, so let me draw this diagram first so here is how the diagram is going to look like so you know uh, so this is gamma s not which is just gamma c this is gamma s1 then i will have uh, gamma s2 and so on and then finally i have uh, uh, this is gamma uh, s sub n which is just gamma sub d and this guy here is gamma sub s n minus 1 I can find uh, these these values starting from s0 to sn for sufficiently large n such that you know you give me any value of t you give me any value of t then of course the image of something like this will be something like this uh, uh, well if I draw it it will be something like this okay that this will correspond to a given t all right it will be a it will be this point this first end point z0 when t is a and this this thing will collapse to the terminal point z1 when t equal to b but in between the image of uh, this uh, line segment will be something like this that will also be a path connecting a point connecting this uh, uh, the point corresponding to t in the first path with the point corresponding to t in the last path okay and but the point is that you know if you take any two successive uh, points uh, the the distance of those points is less than delta okay so you can find such a finite collection of points okay so there exists there exists s0 equal to c uh, strictly less than s1 and so on lesser than sn minus 1 is equal to d such that for every t uh, for every t in a b the distance between gamma s uh, of t and uh, gamma 
S prime of t is less than delta for S comma S prime belonging to any sub interval S i S i plus 1 i equal to 0 and so on up to n minus You can divide, you can divide uh, uh, this rectangle into small thin rectangular strips with this property. This is purely by compactness. Okay. Okay. So it's a compactness argument that you can further expand and try to write down, but it's uh, intuitively ob obvious and it's easy to write down. So you can do this. Now, uh, once you've done this. Once you realize that you can do this, the proof of the theorem is over. Because you see, what will happen is, you see, because the distance between, uh, 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 because the distance between all the paths in between gamma uh, si and gamma si plus one is less than delta, they will all define the same analytic continuation. Okay. That again. Uh, the proof of that is again following the proof of the lemma of the previous lecture. So what it will tell you is that on each for each of these pieces the analytic continuation along the upper path is the same as the analytic continuation on the longer lower path and then you go by induction ok. So the analytic continuation along S0 gamma S0 is the same as analytic continuation along gamma S1, the analytic continuation along gamma S1 is the same as analytic continuation along gamma S2 and by induction finally you will get that the analytic continuation along gamma s0 is the same as analytic continuation along gamma sn in other words analytic continuation along gamma s gamma c which is gamma is the same as the analytic continuation along gamma d which is neta okay and that proves the monotermy theorem okay so what you must understand is that uh, it's a kind of uh, cleverly uh, playing upon the ideas of the lemma that we proved in the previous theorem and also critically using the fact that the radius of convergence is a is a continuous function that is a very critical fact that you keep using. And also uh, let me again uh, repeat the uh, the main idea in the proof of the lemma of the previous lecture was that you know if you take sufficiently close paths then there is only there is a there is a unique analytic continuation on that path and it is simply defined by expanding the the relevant function on the given path into a power series okay so uh, if you if you take two nearby paths and if i have this analytic continuation along the path gamma s not on along a near nearby path gamma is the analytic continuation how is it defined it's very simple what you do is you simply define the analytic continuation by simply expanding this function at gamma s0 of t0 at gamma s of t0 and you do this for every t0 okay. So uh, the fact the, the whole idea is you know if a function is analytic at a point it lives in a neighborhood and therefore that function itself can be used to define power series in paths in that neighborhood okay. So it so in other words if you have a path and you give me a point on the path and you give me an analytic function at that point then there is a disk by definition of analyticity there is a disk where the function is analytic and whenever there is any other path which passes through the disk along the portion of the path which passes through the disk I can simply define the analytic continuation to be the power series expansion of this function that lives okay that and that is a crucial this is a very very crucial idea okay. So, that is a crucial idea that is being used and also the idea that the radius of convergence is yeah uh, uh, is a continuous function of the of the point okay so so let me write down uh, by the uh, uh, proof of the lemma of the previous lecture Uh, analytic continuation continuation 
along gamma Si is the same as that along analytic continuation of F along gamma Si is the same as that along gamma Si plus 1 uh, for every i starting from 0 to n minus 1 thus analytic continuation continuation uh, of f along any comma s leads to one and only one function at z1 and that is the proof of the monotonic theorem. So let me again at the risk of repetition let me again stress the whole idea is if you have a path and at a point uh, gamma of t if you if you have if you are given an analytic function f s uh, uh, I mean f t analytic function here then if you have any other path which hits this disc where f t lives along this path along the portion of the path from here to here leaving out the end points that is this f itself has a trivial analytic continuation along this that is the whole idea that uh, is being used again and again and you are of course crucially using very very crucially the fact that the analytic continuation along a path is unique once you fix a parameterization of the path the analytic continuation is unique for a given st starting function okay you cannot have two different analytic continuations with the same starting function for the same parameterized path that is one important fact. The other important fact is the radius of convergence that varies continuously uh, as, as the uh, it, it is a continuous variable of the point uh, where you are expanding or writing the power series about. So these are crucial facts, so I will stop here.